Cardena is set to do an 11x by May 3rd, 2022, based on pure technical psychology of buying and selling. And today, I'm going to show you a high probability entry point and how we made that conclusion. If you like today's video, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you don't know me by now, my name is Jiggy. I'm the award-winning author of The Extraordinary New Venture Capital Opportunity, How to Invest Like a Pro, been featured in the best-selling book, High Probability Trading Strategies, back in 2008, where I only used to focus on currencies, but now exclusive on cryptocurrency. So let's dive straight in. Now, with Cadena, I don't know much about the project other than it's a blockchain, it's top 72 coin, and it's moving, right? What? I am looking at is pure technicals. We're talking about an 11x, which is 1,100% ROI by May 3rd. And today I'm going to show you, I've done this in advance, but then we're going to go into a live chart. I'm going to show you textbook entry points with high probability because we can only do probabilities and never certainties. So what's the key things over here that we want to pay attention to? First of all, Cardena has moved in a five wave sequence. The market moves in fives and threes, fives and threes. Think about it, you got five fingers and then your finger breaks down into three. If you can count to five and you can count to three, you can read the markets like a pro. Check this out. One, two, three, four, five. Overextended panic buying. And now we're looking like we're getting this three. A, B, C. What we find, and I'm going to cover this in depth today, is this wave also does a five and a three. This wave over here also does a five and a three. And this wave over here also does a five. And now we've got a larger degree after a five is a A, B, C. So we're going to cover quite a few things today. We're anticipating by May, by January 28th, the price to come down a bit further to $6. And there's a few particular reasons. One of them is, guess what? Five. Look at this. One, two, three. We've got what looks like a four. And we should anticipate a five of a two. We're going to cover that in a bit more depth in a second. So just a quick reminder, markets moves in fives on the upside, one, two, three, four, five. You'll see this time and time again and 60, 70% of the time it's clear and it's identifiable. A, B, C, three. Yeah. Bump, bump, bump. And this is where we believe Cardano is at the moment, at the low over here. After a five and a three, what comes next is the next impulsive five. One, two, three, four, five. That's what we're anticipating. This is textbook Elliott Wave theory, and it takes into account Fibonacci ratios. Really simple once you've practiced, but everything is difficult before it's easy. Then this wave one, two, three, four, five is regarded as a wave one, and then this ABC is regarded as a wave two. And what we anticipate next, because we can, the markets are always contracting and expanding, contracting and expanding, growing and shrinking. That's what we want to be aware of. And then we have anticipating a wave three. By the way, if you're brand new to crypto, to Elliott Wave, to Fibonacci, to reading the markets, because imagine you can read the markets without having to read the white paper, without really need, needing to know the, the roadmap, the technicals on the paper, the team, everything else. We can just look at the psychology of buying and selling because ultimately that's what drives the price. I've actually got a free Elliott Wave and Fibonacci masterclass that breaks this down in detail so you can really get familiar with these chart patterns. So now next, let's jump into Cardano itself. Look, this is the chart. I've just squeezed it, but I want to show you how powerful this. Look at this. On the theory side, one, two, three, four, five. And now look, look, so you got the one, two, three, four, five. There's a few different kinds of structures that occur, but then we always anticipate a three-wave structure as a minimum after a five-way sequence, A, B, C. So then a big part of the thesis, the thinking, the probability is after a three-wave correction, which is referred to as this wave too low, we should anticipate the next expansion, the next growth part of the market, which is one, two, three, four, five to the upside. And it's referred to as a wave one, a wave two, and a wave three. So when we drew it like this, this is what I'm anticipating with Cardano. Here it is, people. Here it is. By Jan 28th, which is this red line, we're going to go into a live chart in a second and we're going to do this from A to Z. I'm going to show you a high probability entry point. It's probability, but the probability is in your favor. You get the edge because there's a confluence of events that tells us that the market is likely to reverse and explode to the upside, but we can protect ourselves from the downside. So what we're saying here is down here is January 28th, this red line. And we're anticipating a bullish movement to the upside up to around the $68 mark, $68 mark. 
by May 3rd. We've got this red line over here. I'm going to show you on a live chart how we did this, but we're anticipating a wave three over here at the overextension phase. Now, we're going to show you this here. This is the typical minimum wave three zone, 1.618. That would be a 7.4x from this wave two low at $6. $6 to $44.60 is 7.4x. So we're looking for that range as a minimum. And then the overextension 2.618, which is very common in crypto, is an 11x. That's why I said 11x Cardano, 1,100% objective, mechanical, non-emotional, no hype over here, even though I'm excited about LUAs and Fibonacci because it gives us such an edge on the market. So when we're doing the counts, look at this again. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C. And then we're looking for a one, two, three, four, five, one, two, and oh, three. How beautiful is that? Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification because I don't think you're going to find this anywhere else because most people don't know this. But if you can count the five wave sequence and the three wave sequence, then you'll know that a lot of things in nature grow in fives and threes with Fibonacci ratios. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dive in to a live chart. But you have the data, right? You have the data because a lot of you tell me, you get sometimes you don't make it clear where the price is. You don't make it clear on what the date is. Well, we're saying by May 3rd, Cardano to hit between $44 to $68. Right? We can't get much clearer than that. By May 3rd, the low to be by January 28th, by or before January 28th. By the way, the reason I'm looking at Cardano is many of you have been commenting in the comments, Jagir, can you do an analysis on Cardano? Well, here it is. So now we're going to do is we're going to jump into our live chart. So let's pull this up. Now, here's what I did this morning. Bang. This is what you just saw the images of. But what we're going to do today, we're going to start from scratch and then we're going to do a high probability entry point because it's good for you to know and see how simple it can be once you're trained. So we're just going to delete all the lines and now we've got a nice clean chart. We're just going to zoom in initially. And there's a couple of things. There's a couple of things that I want to cover today. So we're going to do it. I'm going to aim to do it fast. Let's see, let's see how fast I can do it. But keep in mind, I got the free Elliott Wave Fibonacci Masterclass that breaks down the detail. You know, I've got courses that teach it step by step in bite sized chunk. And if you buy the course, you actually get invited to my private Telegram group. We hold workshops, live workshops on every Saturday. And I'm looking to do more of this because we're coming towards the last 20% of the bull market. And most people are terrible at taking profits. But if you can read the tops, what's likely to be the top and buy at the bottom, you're going to have a higher probability of winning because it is a zero-sum game where people are going to win and people are going to lose. But if you can read the market like this, it's going to give you an edge on others. That's really, really key. So the first thing, we're going to focus on pattern. Pattern. What do we see? Well, when I was thinking about this this morning, what I saw was this here. A wave one, what looks like a wave two, a wave three, a wave four, a wave five. So very bullish overextended wave five. Now, important to know, if we take this data back to here, right, this wave three is a typical wave three. You know, we're looking at this like this, but the, it was just incredibly bullish. And this is not driven by, actually driven by optimism. This, this part here is actually not driven by optimism. This here. This is driven actually by fear. Fear of missing out and panic buying. Right, it's really overextended, very com familiar and common with commodities because it's seasonal and people are buying out of fear, fear of the dollar going down so they need to buy more gold and it drives the price up. But after that, it tends to have a big correction. And then what do we see here? Well, it couldn't get much clearer. There's a really good chart pattern because sometimes when you comment on um, coins, I have a quick look on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap. I have a quick glance and at a glance, I could see this is making a really clean, what we're seeing here is an A, B, C. This looks like a five wave sequence. One, two, three, four, five. And look at this, three wave sequence. A, B, C as a three. What we anticipate on the downside, one, two, three, four, and then a five. Remember, fives and threes. Markets moving fives and threes. If you can count to five and you count to three, man, you're going to beat most people in this game because most people have no idea. They're just, they're just looking at random price movements, but it's not random. It's human psychology. A, B and what looks like a wave C forming, right? So that's phase one. We got that done, right? So when we were looking at the, the images before, this is what we had. Another thing that most people don't know, I'm just going to get rid of these lines now. I'm going to keep the, the annotation, the numbers and the letters, but we'll just get rid of these lines because we can keep the chart as clean as we can. Oh, another thing. Once a full five wave sequence has occurred and then the ABC a, a sequence has occurred, now that is like a set pattern that's finished. 
and now it's going to expand into the next phase. And because this is really the first, like if we take all the data with Cardena, we can see that it's been pretty flat. I mean, it didn't look flat when we when we were back down here. It looked like this, fives and threes, fives and threes. But when it got to this phase, it was like a new expansion of the market. So we can almost ignore anything prior. But what we want to now have the wave count as is now that this five wave sequence has complete, we know it's complete because of the big correction. This now counts as a wave one on a higher degree. After a one, two, three, four, five, there's a more macro degree count. So this counts as a wave five, sorry, a wave one. Bang. And it's confirmed because we had that big pullback. So we got great. And then what we're anticipating now is a wave two on a more macro degree, right? So afterwards, we are now going to anticipate a wave three. But because we're live now, this, this, today is the, what is it? Uh, what's the date? 13th today. It's the 13th today of January 2022. So we're live. This is now, because we did Phantom the other day, which was in hindsight. Now we're doing this with foresight. We haven't got the data. We are now doing high probability, pure technical analysis based on Elliott Wave. Fibonacci, we're going to use some momentum and we're also going to use some time as well. Fibonacci time, very, very powerful. So there's a thing called a wave four, right? A thing called wave four. Now, this is the previous wave four of this sequence. The corrections often, when it has a three wave, finish in the range or in like close to the range or at the bottom of the range of the previous wave four. Very important, powerful information. Very powerful information. So we know it's quite tight, so we don't need to really draw it, but we'll draw it like this anyway. You know, we've got this range here that we are anticipating that this correction should finish, right? That, that's important for us to know. Yeah, that's, that's number one. Two, we are going to do something called a Fibonacci retracement. I'm going to do this quite fast because I'm going to keep it quite punchy. Um, is Again, I covered the depth in, in terms of the how in my courses in and the master class, I'm just gonna make sure I get the high and the low. Bang, bang, here we go. Boom. Now, typically, minimum correction is 50%, 62 to 78.6. And this 78.6 is looking like it's gonna be likely because of the way the wave structures are. So the 78.6 is the important one, and I wanna just make it a bit thicker so we can see it. See it, you can see it down here on the chart. Very important, right? So that's our maximum retracement. Then, this over here, A, and the wave C have a direct relationship. It's either 62% of wave A is what wave C is, because the 62% is like the, the Fibonacci ratio, or 0 0.618 to be more precise, or 100% or 1.618. But we're looking for a cluster, which one falls the closest to 78.6, and we're gonna really narrow it down. It's gonna be very, very powerful, very precise, very objective. This is the key thing, it's objective. It's not subjective, it's not emotional. You can see, I have, I'm dispassionate about Cardano. You might love it, you might hate it. I go, to be honest, I don't know much about it. There's so many cryptos out there. I, I'm familiar with it, but I haven't done like a deep dive. But purely technical, look at this. This is the 62%, 62%. So I've measured wave A, taken 62% of it, which is roughly around this. And then I've projected it forward and it's given me this green line. Now we have a cluster, which is very, very powerful. Then we're going to do something called an external retracement. Now I'm going to do it quite fast. You're going to measure this wave B. A, B, C of a B. And so we've got an external retracement, 1.618. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it. If you watch down here on the right, it's literally clustering over that range. And the range is 1.72, 1 1.272, should I say, to 1.618. And you can see it's right in that range. So now we're going to get even more precise. We're going to dive in to this last part of the sequence, right? What do you see? Let me tell you what I see, right? On the downside, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing a nice wave one, an ABC, look, fives and threes. If we went to a lower degree time frame, we'll see this clearer. Five, and then there's, there's three here, ABC over two, really, really clean. And then it looks like we formed what looks like a wave three down here, an ABC, what looks like a four forming, uh, an irregular uh, wave four, as in a AB, the B goes below the three, and then a, a C, and then a wave five that we should anticipate. This is now not an intermediate count, it's a micro count. So we can go micro, so it just tells us different degree wave counts. And we know that we should anticipate this low getting exceeded by a final leg to come into this range, right? That's important for us. So what we're gonna do now to finish up on the Fibonacci price is, 
Let's get rid of it. Let's just do it like this. I'm going to do an end of wave five price projection. What I want to quickly just do as a, just for fun, is this zone here, this wave three zone here. Check this out, right? We measure wave one, bang, bang, and project it from the wave two high. And the key number that we're looking for is 1.618. And it's in that region, in that region. That's the key number over here, 1.618. If I take candlesticks, sometimes you'll find on the micro count, look at that, oh my Lord, I didn't even know that was gonna happen. Look at that, right? The reason I did candlesticks is when you're taking micro counts, you wanna take intraday data into account, but check this out, how beautiful is this? I didn't even plan this, this is, but this is the power of Fibonacci and Elliott waves. This is just incredible. This wave three, look at the close of, the, oh, sorry, the, the range, literally tagged the 1.618. If we just, I, I love this, I love this stuff. Yeah, if we just take this low, if we look up, up here, uh, we're gonna look at this number up here as the low. If we just hover over this candle, it says 7.8 and look at this. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but this number for 1.618, I don't know if I can zoom in, can I zoom in? I don't know, let me zoom in. Yeah, well, the number over here says 7.86. Right? Look at that, it's tagged. Like literally, this is how powerful human psychology is when it plays out time and time and time again. So that was, that was very, very powerful. This was just for the fun of it. But you'll see these ratios play out. But the key here is that it's non-emotional. Non-emotional. You don't even need to know what the project is. You can show me any token, any coin, and hide the ticker symbol. I'll go, look, I can do the chart analysis because the, the, the fundamentals, especially short term, are almost irrelevant, believe it or not. I know it sounds crazy if you're not familiar with this, but it is what it is. That was my training with Forex. I used to, just to trade these currencies and I had no idea what was happening in the country, but I would be able to make consistent profits. Right, I'm just doing an end of wave five target as I'm talking and I'm multitasking. Look at that. You see this down here on the left? Just watch this line come up. You see it's right in that cluster zone. One of the key ratios for end of wave five is a measure the wave one to three, project it from a wave four, and 62% of that range is that range, and the maximum, typical maximum is 100%, which is outside of that range, so we don't need to pay attention here. So what we have, what we have, and we could do a few other things, but this is more than enough, more than enough to say, all right, we have confidence to say this is a very high probability psychological resistance zone that we should anticipate an end of a wave I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna show you this. End of a wave five of a C of a two. There's three degrees of count. There's a micro count, there's an intermediate count, and there's a macro count. I covered this in the masterclass, but more in my courses, I break this down in a particular lesson, because most people don't realize that there's fives within the fives, and then the waves break down. But again, everything is difficult before it's easy. Driving is difficult before it's easy, before it's wired into your unconscious and you can do it unconsciously. And hence, practice is the mother of all skill. So that's enough for the Fibonacci. So now we've got price and we've got pattern, right? So if we just zoom out again. So now you've seen the method behind the madness. Like, how can you be so confident that it's going to get down to $6? My God, I don't know it's going to get down to $6. I'm just saying there's high probability, right? Now we've got a real high confluence of events. We can actually get rid of this as well. We can just stick with, not this one, this one. Yeah, this one. This one's not that relevant. Bang. All right, so now we're going to do some time. Time is beautiful, right? Time is beautiful. What I mean by time is you have to make a judgment call on when does this wave one begin. I actually did this to help me. I literally zoomed in like this and I went, oh, okay, it's clear when you do this that this is where the wave one begins in this zone. So when you zoom back out, it's not as clear, um, but you can just keep it like this. So, you know, but that's where we're counting wave one. For time analysis, is, is more important. For price, you know, it doesn't make that much of a difference um, because this, this range from 46 cents to 50, 60 cents is not that, that big a deal in terms of the grand scheme of things. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna measure time. It timed your gear, you're gonna measure time, what does that mean? Well, we're gonna take from this point to this point, we're gonna measure how long it took to make this high. So it's a measure here, bang. And typically, if I just copy and paste this, typically the maximum time a wave two correction has is 100% of the time it, it took to form the wave one. And the minimum, it, the most common is half, 
So we take half of this arrow. And I'm just going to estimate it like this. Right, half of this arrow. And then we'll have this time. This time period. Right? Like this. Beauty of trading view. So the software you were using is called trading view. We don't need to do all these arrow. I'm just doing it for your benefit so you can kind of see the method behind the madness. With trading view, there's a trend-based fib time tool. And we literally just click this beginning of wave one to the end of wave one. We do a second click at the end of wave one. And then the two ratios that we want is 50%. To 100%. And look at that. That's what, that's what this pink box represents, right? And that's what these arrows represent. You see that? These lines? Great. That, but the lines and the pink box, sorry, the pink box and the line, uh, arrows were for your benefit. So now we got this range. We got, yeah, but you guess a broad range. That's like, you know, it says December 29th to February 14th. That's like, you know, two months, two, three months. We got too broad. Can we narrow it down, please? I go, oh, absolutely. You go, oh, well, how do we narrow it down? Well, it's quite simple. Wave A, similar with price, has a direct relationship with wave C. Right? We know that because we said it before, right? That's how we got part of these um, price clusters. So what we simply do is, in a similar fashion, we're going to measure how long, using the same tool, it took for the wave A to form, but this time project it forward from the wave B high and the key ratios that we want this time is actually 62% to 100%. Now we've got a very narrow range, right? Very narrow range. Now you'll see how I drew the pink box in the previous diagram. I think I've got a pink box here. Here we go. Let's just do it like this. Bang. Here. Look how beautiful that is. Right? It doesn't mean it's going to reverse here. It just means it's very high probability. So now we have a narrow date range from January 15th is the earliest to January 28th. That's how I got the date January 28th. I didn't just pick a date out of thin air. It was just um, logical, mechanical objectives. So we can delete the other ones. We go, we're in that range. Now we're in the range within the range. That's great. So now we've got pattern, you know, ABC, one, two, three, four, five. We've got price. And now we've got time. There's three major, major, major factors telling us that we're likely to see a psychological low and then a trend reversal and then us to go on to make all-time new highs. But we want to take one more thing into account. I normally do this first, which is the momentum. We are now going to jump into a weekly chart and we look at the weekly momentum. So this is quite clean. And what do we see? The blue, I'm just going to do it like this so I can just see the number. Yeah, the blue has just gone over the red. So we've had a weekly bullish reversal, right? That tells us the next three to six to eight weeks should be sideways to up, right? Sideways to up. Hopefully you can see that, right? Sideways to up. But we want that to coincide with the minimum of the five-wave sequence of that wave C, right? A five-wave sequence. Remember the market moves in? Fives and threes. Fives and threes. Most common, most typical. Right. So now, again, that's why we say probabilities, never certainties. Right. Uh, yeah, daily. Perfect. So now we want to pull up a your momentum indicator for the daily chart. All right. So now we're going to focus. Now we're going to get precise towards that entry point. Because remember, I told you I'm going to give you an objective entry point. Right. So this is where it's a game changer. This is going to up your level and separate you from the amateurs. Separate you. I'm telling you, this is powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. So now we've got this, what looks like a one, two, three, four, and what looks like a potential wave five. So there's a couple of things we want to do. One is we can measure where is the likely wave four, right? Where is the likely wave four? We could do a couple of things. We could actually go to a lower degree time frame and see where's the wave four here, because the this wave four will probably end into the previous wave four. But we're going to keep it really simple on this. Most wave fours end at 38.2% of wave three. What you can't say that again? I go, well, this is wave three. And if we measure it and take a retracement, how much the price retraces up is typically 38.2%. Now we have to make a judgment call on uh, well, we'll do both. We'll do both on um closing day data, but now we're taking in you know micro data. We're not looking to trade this part, we're just looking for a bit more confirmation that this is looking like 
a wave four and it's right in that zone look at that so wave four zone um and it looks like a nice abc uh you know if we measured this you know we could take the intraday data and we can look at this and the typical maximum of a wave abc is a one point uh, 1 1.618 so it looks like we're forming this this over here so what's likely to occur and i'm doing it deliberately like this is on the next bearish reversal did you get a what bearish bear what does that mean <laughs> i go well we're using a momentum indicator called the stochastics rsi i teach it in my courses how to set it up how to use it um this particular setting if you double click on it uh those that are familiar with it, it's 8533 these are all fibonacci ratios 8533 i ever use 8533 of 13855, which are all Fibonacci ratios. And then we choose the one that marries up the best with the chart itself. So what we're looking for is a bearish reversal, meaning that the blue line goes below the red that says the, the, the immediate term momentum is on the downside. And then on the next bullish reversal, where the blue line will go over the red, well, more than likely in the time range and in the price range that we've projected in advance with our technical analysis, will more than likely coincide with the low and then on the next bullish reversal we know the weekly momentum which is the higher degree time frame is bullish is pointing is pointing up at the moment then on the next daily bullish reversal next bullish reversal if it coincides with pattern price and time we're reaching that time zone you know the 15th of january is only in a couple of days then we have a very high probability end of a wave five of a wave c of a wave two and then we go, we're going to do some price projections for our wave three, which we've done already, but we're going to just reevaluate that to make sure we're very, very clear. But then we're going to do some entry points and risk management. You go, what do you mean? Well, we're doing probabilities, but never certainties. So what we say is we anticipate that this is going to be the low, but what's the minimum that should occur if we are wrong? If it turns out to be a complex correction, if it turns out to go on to make lower lows, what's the minimum that should occur before that occurs? If that happens, we want to get risk-free, money back in our pocket. If you're using stop losses, move your stop losses to entry point so you break even. So then you protect your capital. Remember Warren Buffett's rule? Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. So this is one of the ways that you can apply that rule of minimizing losing money. So even when you're wrong, you make a small profit. And when you're right, you make a huge profit. And that's the secret and the art and the science of trading. So, what do we do now? Well, <coughs> let's just zoom back in a little bit like this. And down here. So hopefully that's all made sense. So what we want to now look at is a couple of entry strategies. right? If this plays out, and you, you'll find that I'm, I'm using the word like if and, and so on and so forth. But often wave five is often equal or similar to wave one, especially when wave three is extended. So we are anticipating something like this. Yeah, something like this, give or take, right? So what we want to do, I'm going to move to candlesticks for a second because they're easier to see each day. It's easier to see each day, right? Much, much easier to see each day. Every candle here on this particular chart, where I've got a D up here, this D, this represents a, a daily chart. So every bar is a day. So if I click on it, it says I can go to a minute chart, three minute, five minute, 15 minute, where every bar will represent five, 15 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, as in an hour, four hour chart, a daily chart, a weekly chart, a monthly chart, etc. So here every bar represents a day. So what we're going to do is when we get our, our setup, meaning the momentum has gone in the oversold zone, meaning below this black line down here, over down here, and we get the bullish reversal. Boom. We got that done. We want that as a minimum requirement. We're in the price zone, so the price goes into this zone and it has exceeded this previous low. So it's now making that wave five of a wave C of a wave two. That's our next confirmation. And then we're in the prior the time zone. So after the 15th of January, before the 28th of January, we're in that high probability time zone. So now we've got pretty much four things: we've got momentum, pattern, price, and time saying a similar thing. What we want to do is then enter on. More conservative would be a swing high. Oh, what the heck is a swing high, Jagir? I go, well, this movement goes up and then it swings down, right? That's what we're anticipating. So then the swing high is the wave four, the high of the wave four, which is here, right? That's a good entry point, good, safe entry point. Why? Because that's one of the first 
major confirmations that we've got a trend reversal is taking out our swing high, right? So that's entry number one. If you're a little more aggressive, what you could do is you can enter on a one bar high. You go, what does that mean? Well, I'm just gonna, if I just wind back the clock to, let's just assume for a second, I know it's not the case, but let's just assume, uh, let's do it like, uh, we'll do it like this actually. Let's do it like this for here. I'm gonna take this tool and I'm gonna, let's just say, let's just say here our requirements are met and we say the next bullish reversal, I don't know if it takes off before the bull reversal. Uh, It hasn't exceeded yet. So what we can do here is let's just say we were looking to go long. The swing high strategy would be, if I just delete these two lines, is this, this is the conservative mark for the price to exceed this high and then your stop loss will go below the low, the swing low. If you're a bit more aggressive, you can either go to a lower degree time frame and wait for a major bull reversal and then on that go on a one bar high so when we get the reversal we are saying if the price takes out the one bar high there bang that's where we're going to enter and then the stop loss will be here and then we have to ask ourselves some risk management questions which we're going to go into in a second you know when should we become risk free and then this would have obviously worked out very very well for us because we know the market took off but they're the two entry strategies, swing high or one bar high. Hopefully that made some sense. And then the market went on to do some amazing moves, right? Uh, but we're anticipating this next move. So if we just go back to today's data, bum, 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 bum. It's for a similar thing to happen now. <coughs> so we don't have that information right now. But we can do something similar. So I'm drawing like this deliberately. So let's just say the price moves like this. And we go, yep, that's all great. We will, the safe, the safe one is, again, the swing high. And you can go to a lower degree in time frame because this wave five, this, this wave five here would tend to break down in five because wave five tend to break down into five wave sequences. Or you can go on the one bar, one bar high. And then what the, the, the score is, is if we get a reversal, let's just stick with the swing high because we know what that is at the moment. We don't know what the one bar high is at the moment. Let's say we get a reversal like this, bang, we get an entry. Our stop loss is at the position of where our wave count will get invalidated, right? So what's the rule? Well, if this is a wave too low, then the wave two shouldn't, the price should not go below the wave two. So there's no reason for you to have your stop loss any lower than the low of the wave two. So if wave two was at six dollars, then we will put it at five dollars ninety-five, right? So so in that range. And then we're gonna do finish off on one last thing. Cause you don't really need to get overly concerned about where is the price likely to go. Once you know this, because once you got your analysis and we are anticipating, you know, a, a new high being made. That's enough information. And then your, your art becomes entry, entry, objective entry points that are mechanical, objective, and non-emotional. Because when it gets into the, you know, you feeling that you're missing out and you jump in, FOMO in, then you've already lost. So what we're going to do is two things. One, we'll do a wave three projection. We'll do, we'll do that projection based on price, price and time, some basic price and time. And then we'll do where would be a good risk-free entry. So risk-free ex exit, get your, get your money off the table, back in your pocket. So let's do this quite fast. And by the way, if you want to learn this, I've got my free Elliott Wave and Fibonacci masterclass in the link below. And if you take one of my course, buy one of my courses, you'll get an invite to my private telegram. We're going to do, we do a lot of workshops, we're going to do more this year. So I'm going to measure this wave one, project it from this wave, this potential wave two low. And the two ratios that I want, which you saw in the initial images, uh, 1.618 and 2.618. They're the two key price zones. We're going to keep it quite broad. And then the time, well, we're just going to measure how long it took to form wave one. And that tends to be the minimum time. You would have seen that with Phantom the other day, right? You saw it with Phantom video the other day. In fact, I might pull it up in a second. We're just going to take it, estimate it from the January 28th low, just to be conservative, and say the, the zone 
maximum time should be, I think we've got May around, I, don't know, I, might, I might have taken it like maybe a bit earlier here. Or I might have taken it here. Because I got May, May 3rd, which is March or May. Let's just make sure I did that right. <coughs> Let's just do that one more time. Yeah, I don't know what I did differently there. But yeah. Let me just take this little hit. Yeah. Yeah, it's around the May May 3rd area. May 3rd, May 4th, give or take. So we know we'll, once we get the momentum nearer the time, we, we, we can kind of get a bit more precise. But now we just got a macro picture over here. 7.4x from the low. Or an 11x to this overextension. So now we've got those price projections. So now we're going to finish on one last thing. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a tickle in my throat still is let's just get rid of all this now we'll, we'll keep that because we haven't hit those numbers yet let's just say we did our entry let's get rid of this get rid of this get rid of this got the pink box get rid of this all right so now what we're going to do is one last thing which is yeah what you get what if we are wrong yeah that's really really important what would be a good risk-free point if we are wrong. So what we do is I'm just going to put this back in. The waves. If we are wrong, what should we anticipate would happen as the minimum? We got the weekly momentum bullish. We're going to have the daily momentum bullish. What should happen if we are wrong? So we should anticipate a minimum of an A, B, C as a minimum. We are anticipating a reversal, one, two, three, four, five as a reversal. But at the time, we're not going to have confirmation at this point here. So what we look at is, I know I'm going into a bit of detail here, but it's important, it's important, because you can just mitigate, or minimize losses. Is a typical minimum correction is 50%. So we want a minimum of 50% movement. And when we see this price happening like this, if it happens like this, we measure the wave A and project it forward from the wave below. And the minimum is 100%. Right, because that's, that's the typical. So what we say, is at the price range of $11 to almost $12, give or take. So basically a 2x, you want to make a decision. You either sell half your position, money back off the table, or, or that's if you get in at $6. If you are buying on the swing high, on this swing high, you just want to be very aware so if the price does do this and you get entered in over here, you want to allow the market to do at least three waves. And if and when we see this structure, you simply either mitigate your losses by moving your stop loss to the swing low. So even if you're wrong, you might make a loss still because the, the price could do this but your loss will be this much versus this much, if that makes sense. Because your, your original stop loss will be below here. So we're going to move your original stop loss, which will be around here. I know I'm getting quite technical here, but this is risk management. And you're moving your stop loss, so you're minimizing your risk. And ideally, you want to be at the point where your stop loss is above your entry point. And then if the market really takes off, then what you do is, and we're going to finish on this because otherwise I'll make this into like a full course, fully fledged uh, thing itself. But Cardano is looking healthy, is looking healthy. Is if this ends up being a one, two, three, four, five, you want to be taking some profits here, allow and hold for a correction. It's up to yourself. If you think it's going to be a big correction, you can either exit and then look to re-enter. But then what you really want to be in the market for is the wave three of wave three, which is this part here. This part here would tend to be very aggressive if it moves like this. That's where you'll make most of your gains. And I would actually look to exit most of my position at the top of a wave three 
and then there's a profit taking away four that tends to occur. Remember fives and threes, and then you'll finally get your, your final leg of the five wave structure, and then you'll be at a point where you've made a wave one, a likely wave two, which we're, we're seeing right now, a likely wave three, and then after a wave three will come what's likely to be a wave four, and then wave five. Right, something, something like this, something like this after, after the sequence. It might be a bit more aggressive, where it's more, if it overextends, it might be like this. We get a wave four, which will tend to be in the range of the previous wave four. And then we might get a wave five. Where did I go? Oh, disappeared. Disappeared on me. All right, come back. Here we go. This one here. Bang. And then a wave five, similar to a wave one. Don't know why it keeps disappearing. There we go. And then guess what happens afterwards? After a five wave sequence? Well, a bigger degree, A, B, C. And then the whole thing goes over again. The markets are always contracting and expanding. That's why we are likely to get the next bull cycle in the year 2024, 2025. You should be starting to think about that, upping your skill level. And then guess what? After this whole wave structure contracts and expands, grows and, and shrinks, is going to have another bull cycle in the year 2029, 2030, more than likely. So if you like today's video, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. This one was a big one. Cardano. Textbook, wave two low, January 28, $6, making a wave three high to end on May 3rd or thereabouts at the maximum price range of around $68 to the lower typical 1.618 wave three at $44 now and that by May 3rd. So you have a nice macro picture. And if you want to learn this and join my private telegram and take some of my courses, take my free eight wave and Fibonacci masterclass is in the link below. I really did my best to make it simplified because this area can be very complicated and it puts people off to even consider it. And I go, look, crypto applies to this really, really well. Let's finish on a quote. Let's go with chapter six. Chapter six is this. He who is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. He or she who is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. That's Benjamin Franklin. Why did I choose that one today? Well, you know, you're busy, right? I'm busy. Everyone's busy. And people say, I'll get around to it one day. If I had more time, if I had more this, I would do it, but I don't know. Oh, I don't know if I can, you know, pay that much for that. Oh, I don't know if I should. People just make excuses. And if you're finding yourself making excuses and your life's not where you want it to be, well, then you're going to need to like, take a look in the mirror and to go, hey, you could be your, your biggest, worst enemy and you need to flip it. The excuse, catch the excuse and flip it to go, ah, oh, business is down because of COVID. You go, no, you flip it. Business is going to be amazing because of COVID. How? I go, I don't know, but at least you now have opened up your mind to the possibility. I haven't got time to learn Elliott Wave. It's like, I always make time for things that are important to me that make a difference in my life. Let me wake up earlier and stop watching so much Netflix, right? So you can kind of work it out or reduce my social media time from three hours a day. If you, might, if you timed out, you probably on three hours a day narrow it down to one hour a day. Now you've just saved yourself two hours and you can apply yourself to learn this so you can increase your financial health, so you can enjoy this banquet of life. And just keep getting into the flow. Also remember, when you do take my Fibonacci LA Wave Masterclass, it's free, but everything is difficult before it's easy. But when you can count to five and three, five and three, and then you start seeing it, you go, oh, hang on a second. It's true. Like, it's, it's, it's psychologically, psychology is playing out. People... This mass hurt psychology just repeats itself. And when you see it and it identifies and then it marries up and then you get used to using Fibonacci ratios and then you add in the momentum indicator, and then you've got three things that are telling you, okay, this is likely to do a reversal or it's likely to hit a top. And now you also have the secret to all my analysis. That's exactly what I do. If you've seen it and you're kind of surprised on, wow, Jagir projected the central land was going to hit that top and then it went a little higher and then it just did a big wave four. Go like magic. Phantom, same thing. We did Bitcoin, same thing. We did Solana, the wave too low. Now you know exactly how we did the wave too low. It's almost exactly the same as what we just saw with um, Cardena, you know, that ABC correction. And if you look at my, I think it was in August, I, I don't know, the, the Solana low, there's a video on it and it was just bang on. And then Solana went from like $22 up to like $206 in the space of a few weeks. 
right? But, but people were like, how did you know? I go, it's just Fibonacci and Elite Wave. I wasn't even looking at the roadmap of Solana. I was just looking at pure technicals. And the beauty of pure technicals is it just eradicates the noise, the emotion. You don't need to watch the news. You don't need to watch 50 people. Kind of, are they saying the same thing? Is it marrying up with Nupal? Is it stuck to flow? Is it, is the this happening? Is that happening? Is this happening? Uh, what's the roadmap? What's the team? What's the PL? Are they in profit? Are they in loss? Have they got more customers, less customers? What's the market sentiment right now? Just go look. ABC 12345. 12345 ABC. That's it. There you go. If you like today's content, share it. Please share it. Please share it. Because, you know, this is important. A lot of people are going to lose money in crypto. A lot of people in all markets, stock markets, commodity markets, whether it's the forex markets, whether it's gold, whether it's wheat, whether it's oil, whether it's bonds. Or if it's real estate, whatever it is, a lot of people lose money because they don't see what we're showing you. We don't see this. So let people know, especially if you're in a group of people and you're kind of participating and you're learning together because learning together makes things just, just easier, more fun. So like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Today was a powerhouse one. Let me know what you think and I'll see you very soon.